Hey, Peekaboo, everybody, it's Rob. And if you didn't know, my last name is Appel, which I'm pretty sure is short for applique. And I've got a really cool, super forgiving, super simple project today, a pineapple peekaboo. Let's get started. Peekaboo, you say, what the heck does that mean? Well, it's just a glorified way of saying reverse applique. And if you've seen my other reverse applique tutorial, we're gonna do this a bit different. Um, I'm still using batik because I love the batik fabrics because it works beautifully when we're doing our raw edge fused applique, right? And as a matter of fact, the quilt you see behind, I'm hoping you see there's a really cool island scene. There's a wave and a volcano and an island and a sunset and all that going on as the peekaboo itself behind the pineapple. Um, and it doesn't even really matter which style batik fabrics you're using. As a matter of fact, I had this really cool package from Robert Kaufman that is primarily grape style prints, but I love the saturation and the colors that were used here. So these ones are the ones that I cut up for the background. And I also used a few different of uh, the actual fat quarter pieces to build um, what I'll call the foundation in the project. I want to walk you through building your peekaboo, and I even have in that little description below, there's a link for you where I've got your very own printout of the pineapple. I'll drop it there so you can have it hold still there for a second. This is a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. You have my blessing to do whatever you want with this. Take it and enjoy it. I enlarged it to fit my pieces of fabric. And like I said, I was working with two fat quarters as my background. So this is roughly 22 wide. 36 inches tall. If you've never worked with fusible web before, I'm gonna point out something. As I slide this down, this is my big version, you're gonna see the words trace side on my papers. And when we work with fusible web, we often need to flip it over to mirror our design. This one won't really matter for you, but if this is a brand new application of fusible web, I just wanna point that out. So anyways, you might see the words trace side. This is what I'm working with here. And I did go ahead and uh, let me just show you, this will make more sense. Here's my black fabric. This is that black batik fabric here. And what I've done is I have taped, so yes, scotch tape can be ironed over quickly. <laughs> There's a little bit of scotch tape here and here. And I taped together layers of fusible web because you have to get your fusible web ready first, trace onto it, and then we press it onto the back side of our applique fabric to be, right? It's a batik, so there's no real true backside here. Before I cut out the pineapple though, I needed to do one more step to prepare that peekaboo. So let me talk about that for just a moment. We're gonna come back and get this pineapple taken care of. So my pineapple was created. And as I was creating my pineapple for that scene, what I wanted to do, sorry about the noise for a second here. What I did is I took my pineapple and I put it underneath my new pieces of freezer paper, um, tracing paper, whatever you're using. Then this odd shape is the shape of the pineapple that I traced because as I was doing that, I don't, I don't need to extend my entire design across all of that two pieces of fat quarter fabrics. I only need to extend my design just past where the pineapple is gonna hide it for the peekaboo. So I was able to use more small pieces in my applique. So this is a real stash buster if you want to do it that way too. So I just created a design, I drew it out, mapped it out for myself. You can use anything, and as a matter of fact, I'm gonna show you how cool the pineapple actually looks through one solid piece of fabric as well. The image was created, the relief was created so that I didn't have to work too hard, and a lot of our work in this background isn't gonna be seen, so we really don't need to be stressed. This is, like I said, very, very forgiving. Okay, let's get these out of the way. Okay, so I've got a cutting mat down because I'm gonna use my new shark apple cutter, my little 14 millimeter uh, rotary cutter to cut out all of these pieces. It's really super fun and easy. Uh, if you've never done it before, hold it like a pen and let's start on a big piece so it's just easy to get our practice. And I'm just gonna come around and I'm following this line here. And you can start and stop anywhere you want. This is a point, so I'm not gonna try to go around that corner. I'm gonna come back down here to this point like this. And then I'm gonna come around. And you don't have to stay right on these lines because of course, these are just our reverse applique lines. However, you don't wanna to go too wide past them in case you were cutting it pretty close on your peekaboo parts. So again, we're just gonna count out all these pieces like this. And one of the things I would like to talk about if you've never used fusible web before, why we put the fuse on first and then we cut out is so that the glue 
that is left behind by the fusible web when we, we peel this paper off, the glue then acts as a fray check along the edges. And that's also why I mentioned we use batik so much in our applique work, because it keeps it from unraveling. It looks really pretty. You also have the body of your pineapple to do, and these are real easy, but I want you to be thinking about the actual structure of the pineapple because you're gonna use that structure when you do the free motion. So I have some of these walls that have the straight edges, and I have some of these that I drew with a curved line. So if you're using my pineapple, what I did actually is I went through and I cut a bunch of my straight lines first, because I'm all about efficiency. Like that, see? And then I can come back in here and I can cut my curve lines. And what I find is that when I do things repetitively, my body gets that motion ingrained and it really starts to help. And I can come around here and so like I think I missed that little corner. I can put a little nibble in there. And I've also learned the back of the marker or the back of the tool works good for popping pieces out. If you miss any of those corners, you just hit them like that. Oh, I missed a corner. I missed an entire line over here. Ha. Huh. Okay, so we're just gonna go through and you can see how easy it is to cut these pieces out, but for me to get to the next step, I gotta jump ahead. So let me get all these cut out, I'll be right back. Thanks for waiting for me while I cut out those pieces. It didn't take long, but I did want to make sure I cut them really nice and clean because those will be raw edges later on. We're just going to stitch around them as we're finished. Now, I also want to point out, I'm going to leave this paper backing on my fusible uh, pineapple here until the very last minute because I don't want this to turn into like wet duct tape in the wind. If I start to peel this paper off to get this glue ready, here, even though the heat and bond feather light itself is not sticky, so it won't really stick to itself, it could get damaged. If you're a Steamacine fan, I'm just going to caution you, because it's naturally sticky, this could be a problem if you're using the Steamacine product. But the heat and bond product is wonderful for this. I'm going to leave the paper on the whole time. And now I want to talk about getting our peekaboo, or my island scene, prepped out. And what I did for that, starting with my background all over again, um, you can see right here, I put a seam between two fat quarters. So this down here is a fat quarter. This up here was a fat quarter. And this is the 18 inches this way, 22 inches this way to fit within the sizes I needed. Now, I want to point out real close that I've gone ahead and with the free motion machine quilting and just my regular threads, and there is no stabilizer or anything on the back of this because I'm just doing free motion. I'm not doing satin stitching. I've used the machine to anchor and hold down all of my pieces on the background itself. So I've stitched around the pieces with a matching color thread. I didn't use any of the clear threads and I'm holding them securely, but I want you to not be concerned how the free motion goes so much. And of course you could do it with your feed dogs up because so much of this is covered by that peekaboo or the pineapple itself, you won't see it. So here's what I'm trying to also teach. When I was putting in my rays of my sunset up in here, I've left my stitches so that you can see. So as I was traveling around in sections, I've actually come around here and I've used a jump stitch to get from one point to the next. And now that it's getting ready for the actual next phase of basting it all together, pressing it together, I need to cut these jump stitches out of the way. So I'm going to pull these out like this real quick. But I also want to point out that some of these stitches like right here, because this is all going to be covered like this underneath the pineapple itself, is I simply ran a running stitch or actually just quilted my way from one point to the next. And every time we do running stitches versus jump stitches, we're not cutting our threads, we're not starting new knots, so we're less likely to have anything untie. So what I'm trying to say is if you don't have to start and stop, don't, and use the peekaboo itself as part of your navigational tool. I know, a lot of big words. Okay, now, so I'm gonna get these trimmed away. And then the next thing I like to do as my entire island scene is ready to go is I'm gonna build my work surface as I'm ready to base the actual quilt. So the next thing I want is I want a piece of my background fabric. Now your background fabric should always be a, at least an inch or two bigger in all directions. Okay, and I'm going to talk about pressing this 
down and getting the paper off the back of our peekaboo, I'm not gonna really anchor this and quilt it here. If I would, I would use my clamps that I love so much, and you don't know where they're at right now. I forgot to bring them to the, to the filming set. So anyways, I would use my clamps to hold these down so it would be really secure. So secure your background. I'm just using this for a demonstration. I've got my background there. I'm gonna put down my batting. My batting is also larger than my design. Float that in the middle. The design itself is gonna go down here. So you can see that that backing and that batting is past there and that's just good quilting, okay? Just gonna hand smooth this out, make sure it's all good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get our pineapple in place while the paper itself is still on. And I'm gonna do all of my last minute checking. And when I say my last minute checking, what I'm doing, for example, is I'm going around and I'm looking all through here to make sure that I got all the jump stitches cut, that any of those running stitches, remember those are hidden right here now. So all of the design itself is just the way it is. It's all looking great, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start down on one side of my fusible web. And I'm gonna find a good corner and I'm going to start to peel the paper off. And I'm gonna treat this like I did when I was putting those cool old stickers on my windshields and stuff when I was back in high school decorating my car is I wanna peel the paper off slowly and I'm just gonna do section at a time. And it's a little lacy. <laughs> so try to keep track of all your paper. So watch this trick. I'm gonna get up to where that splice in the fusible web is and then I'm gonna remove the paper. There we go. Remember I taped it together. I'm just gonna peel that loose. Just gonna peel that loose. Okay, so now this part itself is free. This piece here can lay back down flat this way. And now what I do is I come and I peel this, this way and I come in here. Oh, this is a good point to point. See right here? I didn't get a good bond right on my fuse. So as I start to pull this away, I'm seeing that the glue is sticking to my paper. So I'm just gonna pick a different location to start from. I'm just gonna come over here. And then as I work towards that spot, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all this paper all the way off. And then I'm getting my iron heated up. It's a dry iron because of the fusible web I'm using. And I'm going to do a press down motion. I do not want to slide my iron at all because I don't want things to move around while I'm doing that. And once it's all pressed, then let's talk about the fuse or the free motion machine quilting. So as you can see, I've got all the paper removed on the back and I'm just going to slowly get this up into location. And whenever we cut these curves in our applique pieces, we want to make sure that everything lays nice and flat. I kind of use my hands like this in this patting motion. So I'm going around, I'm looking to make sure everything is awesome, and I'm going to get that hot dry iron ready, and I'm going to go ahead, and like I said earlier, I'm going to go ahead and press this down. Oh, but wait, I forgot to show you my original idea. That's right, this is what I was originally thinking before I put that island scene in. So check out how cool these can be with just a single awesome batik in the background. So just use the whole batik as the same size as your cutout here for your foundation, and then cut away your peekaboo and put it all out here just like this, and this would definitely be considered a reverse applique, just a little bit different technique. Now, are you ready to see how we're gonna finish off the machine quilting on our island scene? Let me get back to that. As I begin that pressing, I am, I'm gonna start right in the center of my project, and I wanna work from my center and it's just a few seconds for the heat and bond feather light and I'm lifting and I'm pressing and I'm gonna work all the way to the edge and then I'm gonna come back to that center, right back here where I started, it's still nice and warm and I'm gonna keep working and I'm just gonna treat it like a grid and go back and forth across the whole thing. I do not wanna slide that iron because it could turn some of these edges or make things get weird, okay? So once it is completely pressed down and cooled, 
I used the curved safety pins. Um, of course, like I said, I would have had secured my background. Then I'm gonna put a couple curved safety pins. Let's not put them in the black if at all possible. Let's put them in the background because we're gonna sew free motion style or with your feed dogs. You can do this either way. We're going to start by up here in the middle. We're gonna follow the straight lines of the work. And actually, I just come down the straight line as I'm free motion machine quilting and I come around the corner here, or I can come around the corner of the small oval and right back up. And because I started in the center, I'm gonna run and I go on both sides of the straight lines, all of my straight lines first. Then I stop, cut threads, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do these arced motions. And just like I said earlier about cutting the same motion over and over again, quilting the same motion over and over again is actually for me much easier because it's just more rhythmic. So all the straights first and then all the curves. So once all that work is done, then I can come back up here and I can do the quilting around the plume or the crown on the pineapple. And then if you'll join me at the quilt itself on the wall, check this out. I did not do any other machine quilting in any other portions of the background. I just wanted everything to show the basics of the stitching. I wanted your eye to be able to catch in nice on that really cool island scene that was peeking through in your new way of doing reverse applique. Boy, I know it's a lot of information. I hope you learned some super cool new tricks and techniques to simplify your design process. And you know me, I love creating applique and I love your comments, so I'd like to hear from you. What are you thinking? What should we do next? Right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.